So the full 2023 PWI 500. Now, how much do you know about the PWI? So I don't really know too much about it. I just know this is like okay. the one that everyone cares about. So the thing you need to know about the PWI, and this is for those watching at home as well, uh -huh. is that PWI 500 is like a very weird list because it goes from June to June, I believe. It might, oh no, July to July, sorry. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's a mix of kayfabe and like IRL stuff. It can go based on like how you're booked and so on, but it can also go on the quality of matches at the same time, quality of feuds and so on as well. So there's gonna be wrestlers in here. It's like, well, this, you could be like, this is the best wrestler in the world, but maybe the booking hasn't been as strong for them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they, they take into account a lot of like the K-Fabe stuff, sort of like, a, I think it's like maybe like a win percentage. Yeah, maybe. it says uh, win-loss record, championships won, quality of competition, major yeah. feuds, prominence within a wrestler's promotion, overall yeah. wrestling ability. I think that last yeah, one is, uh, the, is the non k fob part. Yeah, that, that's kind of like the, 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 the real part where it's kind of like just the skills of the wrestler in general. Yeah. And it's from uh, July another... 1st to July 1st. Yeah, so, so obviously anything since July doesn't count mm -hmm. that will be in next year's one gotcha. uh the other thing to account is they don't really they don't tend to take into account the size of the television program you're on so for example like obviously wwe is the biggest wrestling tv show but mm -hmm. you know they'll take into account things like indie shows that don't even have tv they don't really take into account like the size of what you're on it's more of kind of like how good you are within that system mm -hmm. So let's start with um, the, let's start with the top ten because I think that's the yeah, one that, yeah. like, is most that, that, that that's that's the talking point really is the yeah. top ten that's all the people tend to care about. Although there is one uh, there year. is one name on this list that's outside of the top ten that is extremely 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 intriguing for me. We'll there, there, a there's a few which I'm like oh interesting. Oh I but, think uh, uh, yeah we'll, we'll get to that. I, I think what, yeah we'll get to those seconds. So obviously number one, uh, Seth Rollins being number one. Mm -hmm. I really like the pick because C has been a workhorse defended his title yeah. multiple times. Steph's like an interesting one where it's like, I can't like disagree with it, but mm -hmm. I'm not sure if I'd be like, yeah, number one. Just like, well, I think he deserves Steph's, number one. Steph's done a lot. Steph's done a lot from like July to July, but he's also lost a fair amount. I want to say, post rumble he was Maybe? doing shit leading up the rumble he was leading up he was doing decently leading up the rumble that's why everyone wanted to see him get that title shot he was united states champion remember he had that long promotion that's with true he was, he, was, he was that's true i do i to be honest i don't remember that just because and, and the thing the is theory. and the thing <laughs> the is theory area. even when even when he lost it to theory theory mm. pinned lashley so seth didn't even get true. pinned for it true that's so true. There's a lot of, you know, like he's been the workhorse. I, I have no problem with this being number one. I think Seth Rollins has been the face of wrestling for a while, mm. which is why the, I'm the hesitant old... on uh, them pulling the Shinsuke trigger on this. The, the only thing I'd say, the only one in the top 10, maybe, there's maybe two in the top 10 where I'd say you could arguably counter it in terms of like the criteria of this list. Mm hmm. And that's Moxley and MJF. What do you mean? So Moxley mm -hmm. has had two world titles during this window. Okay. Uh, now, th are they the most amazing runs? No. But he did squash CM Punk. <laughs> so that's a big deal. Mm -hmm. And then he lost the belt to MJF, who's held it since, I believe. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So, it was kind of, so that's kind of... Uh, He's had two runs with the world title there. Mm -hmm. Outside of that... Nothing. When it comes to, like... Well, you say that, but outside of that, when it comes to singles competition, he hasn't really lost. I think he's lost maybe three times total in a year. Mm -hmm. Obviously, that's singles competition. But I just... But I don't I just, know if they count... When it comes I don't know if they count multi-man. Well, they do. They do. It's, it's whatever you've been in. Um, but the thing with Moxley is... I don't know if I'd put him third. Top 10, sure, because of the name. The name carries weight. Uh, oh, no. I, I think he's definitely undisputed top five. <sighs> like, there's no question about that to me. He's top five. I, I, I think him and MJF should be switched. 
Well, see, I, I think you could maybe put MJF in number three because MJF should be higher in my opinion. Well, I think Moxley is definitely top five because, like I said, he's booked hella strong in AEW. True. He's had good feuds over the last year. He's True. a part of a hot faction over there. True. He doesn't fucking lose. <laughs> so, you know, he's held two world titles. Speaking of... Like, Speaking of doesn't lose, <laughs> yeah. uh, Gunther being number four is pretty fucking cool. Yeah, that, that's a that's a really cool one to be honest. Honestly, might be a bit of a hot take here. I think you could have easily put like you could have put Roman lower in this list below Gunther because Gunther's done more. I don't think you could put so Gunther's pro- the problem. With Gunther's Roman, done more, man. And I, I understand that, but the thing about Roman Reigns is, you know, given the list and everything here, I. Prominence within a wrestler's promotion, I think, is the number one thing here. Overall wrestling ability, every single match Roman Reigns has been in over the last year from July to July. Keep in mind, July to July. Roman Reigns has been around from July to July. He didn't take this hiatus until last month. So, keep in mind, it well, is July to July. But the thing with Roman Reigns... But, he, but, even, but even then, if you look at the matches he's had... They've all been bangers. From... Every single one no, of them. If you, even his match against Logan Paul's match. If, match if, you look, if you look at... The, if you look at the matches he's had from July to July, he has had a total of 19 matches. Total. And they've all been bangers. And they've all been extremely they, they high-profile matches. Oh, actually, actually, it's not even 19. It's 18. But they, they, not all of them have been bangers, I'd say. What, is, what, has, been, what like, has been the worst match that you've seen Roman Reigns in in the last year? In the last year? Was from it? July to July. <laughs> because the last one against Jey yeah, Uso that, wasn't that, the best. That, that's, what, that's what I'm looking at oh it, it's even less than if it's july to july because that one was the mm-hmm. uh that's a house show that doesn't count that's also a house show that doesn't count okay so it's actually way less than i thought uh they, um, do, they do count for this criteria i don't know if they do for house shows uh it does not say anything about house shows it says all k fob win loss record championships quality major feeds prominence and overall wrestling that's what i'm saying though but like uh house shows aren't like a part of the canon most of the time, they so do really still count for win loss though as far as the uh wrestling uh whatever the fuck it's called that like the the, the the non uh biased like re- reviews mm. and stuff like that they still count them for win loss because i because i'm looking at it because obviously listen he's had a <laughs> lot of good matches right i can't but he hasn't outside, had many of them outside of the jay uso match i can't think of a bad one every single one's been a banger even if they're slow starting and slow going, they end in a climactic fashion. I don't see how you can put I'd Roman Reigns. Say, I'd say one of the Kevin Owens ones probably wasn't that great. Maybe. See, here's the thing. Here, here's here's the big thing about Roman Reigns. It's what I was telling John. The tag match of Cena and Owens obviously wasn't that great. Right. It wasn't amazing. The, the thing that I was telling John and Rob about earlier, mm. Roman Reigns is the final boss of the WWE. It's not. Oh no, he absolutely is. And the final boss is going to appear when it someone has earned the right to face the final boss. Mm. Okay. And so, you do not carry that gravata. You do not carry that energy unless you're one of the top people. Like you can't put Roman Reigns lower based on kayfabe. Remember that this is based on kayfabe too. But based on kayfabe, you can't put Roman any lower. If he's the final I don't boss, know. I, I feel like him... you could though, because like looking at these criteria, you have win loss record. Yeah, his win loss record no, is not undefeated his anymore. Win loss but... record is good, right? It's good. Uh-huh. But quality of competition. You you, you look at the matches. Major you, you look at the team. matches. He hasn't had that many championships. Won. Yeah, he's had both the belts the entire year. That's fine. Quality of competition. It's been decent. Major feuds. Decent. Prominence within the wrestler's promotion, you can yeah, he's the top guy on one of the brands, but he's also not there a lot. But it's you know there are ma- there are many weeks wait, when he isn't like, there. Yeah, but he wasn't here tonight, and half the show was still about Roman Reigns. But that doesn't because matter. Because everyone is like, everyone is sitting. I think it does for this list though, because every single person is currently waiting for Roman Reigns to have to clean up the mess that Jimmy and Solo are that, making. But that isn't a part of Roman Reigns' year. Because Roman Reigns isn't an active part of it. And I agree That's with what that. I'm It's not going to be a part of the top four, but I think it does matter for prominence within a wrestler's promotion. Because prominent, and again, maybe I misunderstood, maybe one of us is misinterpreting what they're saying here. But for me, prominence in the wrestler's promotion is how important are you 
to the story of the show, to the from from to the daily operations it, it, of the it's show. How, it's how it, it's how featured you are, basically. Yeah. And it's like, yeah, he's featured like. Don't get me wrong. I'm not saying that Roman Reigns isn't like the biggest star in the WWE, mm -hmm. but it's kind of to me, you know, he's hardly there. He hardly wrestles. When he does wrestle, yeah, the matches are entertaining. The quality of them, if you want to go into the like the real side of it, they aren't the best. They're mostly like soap opera, which I enjoy. You know, I get a kick out of them, but they aren't like hyper quality. He's had the belts for the years, and the quality of competition, he's kind of just had like two people. <laughs> I'm pretty sure. Yes, Okada. Uh, maybe the lowest, maybe the lowest Kazuchika Okada has been in years. Um, Kazuchika Okada is the face of New Japan Pro Wrestling. Okay. Oh, uh, that's right. That's right. That Okada is. Um, I think everyone was saying he's basically Japan's John Cena, right? Pretty much. I, and... I wouldn't say he's Japan's John Cena to me. I'd say he's. I, I I'd say that would be. Um, Tanahashi, who is probably lower on this list because he's a bit older now, mm -hmm. but he he is like the main guy over there. You know what I mean? He's yeah. honestly kind of like their Roman Reigns because he just has a fucking belt. Over there. Gotcha. Okay. <laughs> yeah, he's uh, he's the big boss over there. Uh, gotcha. Last year, for example, he came at number two behind Roman. So gotcha. And and if not, so I saw there was a guy there. Like, there was a match that like this guy like beat the hell out of this dude and it was a huge deal because he beat basically their job was that okada that he beat like there was uh, a big match and it was like maybe? everyone was freaking out about it because like the dude basically squashed him and everyone was comparing it to brock lesnar versus john cena uh when, when brock uh, lesnar squashed cena but potentially then because it's always a big deal when okada loses okay. it's a very big deal when okada loses um yeah no o okada's uh yeah he had like the he had the New Japan uh, IWGP Heavyweight Championship for half the year, I want to say. Okay. Uh, before losing it to Sonata, who's a bit lower down on this list, and number 11. Aside from that, he's kind of just been having, like, feuds. Obviously, he versed um, Danielson and lost, which was a big shock. But, uh, yeah, ever since he lost that belt, it's kind of just been slowed down a bit for him, which is why I think he dropped a bit. But at the same time, it's also Kazuchika Okada. So you can't really put him much lower because <laughs> he's one of the best wrestlers mm -hmm. of all time, pretty much. I don't number eight. How I'm is, so I'm so happy. How my is, man Ca got how number is eight. Cassidy number eight? I need you to explain this to me. Orange Cassidy is the greatest champion in wrestling over the last twelve months. Orange Cassidy has had a complete and utter transformation over the last twelve months. He was the formerly All Atlantic Championship, now known as the International Championship, which is AW's Intercontinental, uh, realistically speaking. Um, and he just lost it to John Moxley. Mm -hmm. Over the last year, he is, I wanted, to, he nearly had it for a full year. Mm -hmm. uh, so most of this time frame, he's held the championship. He's defended it 32 times. Okay. <laughs> most of the matches were really good, and it told a consistent story of this guy trying his best to cling onto a bell despite his body failing him and it was a really well done story he did it excellently and it showed like this evolution of this character because for those that don't know orange cassidy's gimmick is he's a fucking lazy millennial he doesn't give a shit mm -hmm. his tron is just a white background with like fucking felt marker written on it like insert cool image of me here like it he was a comedy gimmick and he still is to an extent but He's kind of had this transformation into like he's found something he gives a shit about and he's been trying his best to go after it and i feel like the next year is likely going to be him trying to get back to it and uh, yeah it's it's been an awesome 12 months for orange gas i mean he's been like genuinely arguably one of the most underrated performers on the planet mm -hmm. <laughs> he's been that damn good so are you do it. <laughs> are you shocked to see Cody Rhodes listed at number ten, given that he is billed as the top baby face in wrestling in WWE? Yes, and I'd argue that maybe he's a bit too high. <laughs> I don't I don't know if you can put the top the top face any lower than ten though. No, but like when it comes to what he's been doing, like he had the match against Roman. Then he had his trilogy against Brock, which mm -hmm. wasn't that well received. 
And then he had a match against Dom. That's kind of it. He hasn't really done much. Because they've just put the brakes on him a little until he can reverse Roman again. True. It's like they don't really have so, much for him except for Roman. Yeah, you know? It's like, I feel like there are probably people that could have been there above him. I'm not sure who, but you know. So here's a name that jumped off the list to me just now. Carmelo Hayes mm -hmm. at number 13. He's had a hell of a year. Yeah, but he's <laughs> on NXT. Like, that must be a huge fucking deal for him. Yeah. I, I mean, mean, I don't see how, how much longer can you keep Carmelo Hayes on NXT and not put uh, him based on, on how <laughs> Based on how it's looking, not for much longer, because uh, that the NXT Championship division is stacked. <laughs> yeah. So I... I but, think they're going to be so, calling so him up here, real soon. Here's my fear, though. So, <laughs> the, the rumors are that they want to make NXT a third brand rather than just the development team. I mean, they, they've tried that twice already, and it worked one time, didn't work the other time, so... Yeah, but it's like, I it's just... I don't know how I feel about it. Like, I, I like the idea... But it's so hard to get I, out of the mindset that NXT is for the development. And I also say I, that I, I wouldn't I wouldn't expect much out of that plan personally because it's never really worked out for them. Right. But, uh, but I will say I expect that Tomello I, to jump soon. I don't understand the hate that people have for people like Becky Lynch and Dominic Mysterio holding belts. It adds something. Uh, I'm, I'm to... personally okay with it. Especially Dom, I think it's fucking hilarious. That Dom's well, got it. I and think I, that's but so but I think it works because the <laughs> no, thing no, is... it, it absolutely works. <laughs> yeah, and I know that. Like, oh, he's he's holding the belt hostage. For, he's fighting for it. He's wrestling for it. Yeah, he's a heel. He just has so, help. <laughs> yeah, he just has help. But still, it's the thing is Triple H. The thing with Triple H is booking in general. It's all about the long term story. You have mm -hmm. to pay attention to every detail. Because just like we're sitting here talking right now about how Jimmy and Solo are fucking up things for Roman, all mm. of this shit's going to come back to bite Judgment Day in the ass soon. Oh, yeah. Because Carmelo's well, going to come up thing. and fuck with them. You got Wesley that's probably going to come up and fuck with them. The thing I, the thing I love about uh, Judgment Day uh, and uh, Triple H's booking is that everything's connected, mm -hmm. which is good. It's one, like, I know a lot of people like the shit on, like, Vince's book and stuff, but the one thing I, I think Triple H just genuinely does better, objectively, is he makes it feel like it's a it's a world with like moving parts in it. You know what I mean? Instead of just here's a thing, it's not related to this thing at all. Like mm -hmm. everything feels like it has consequences. And gotcha. I, I think that maybe is how you could make NXT feel a bit more of a third brand than before when Vince had the reins of the other two. KO and Sammy right, right right on top of each other, 21 and 22. Mm -hmm. I agree with that. I, I, I feel like Sammy could probably be up a little bit more, but I do agree I, with that. I, I, I'm surprised it's KO above Sammy. That's also I true. Be the other way around. I'm also yeah. shocked that they're above Bobby Lashley, but then I remember Bobby Lashley was the United States champion for a while last year, so that mm. makes sense a little bit mm. here. Yeah, um, yeah. Probably had a decent run. Yeah, Drew McIntyre at number 26. Yeah, um, I, I like... Like uh, I imagine a few people are going to be talking about um, Kenny, but like Kenny hasn't done much over the last year. He's been suspended, you know. Who? Because of the uh, Kenny Omega. Oh, okay. Like, like you know, Ke Kenny, he hasn't been the best year for him. He's done some cool stuff, you know. He's had some good matches and shit. Because Kenny Omega, mm -hmm. but like, he hasn't done that much. What was he suspended over the for? last twelve months? Uh, he, the brawl out situation with Punk. Oh, okay. They were all suspended for that last year. So that's oh. a part of this window. He had his belt stripped of him because of that. You know? So it, it's kind of like, yeah. Now, was was, it, was, that, know, was that like a backstage IRL thing? Or was that like a scripted yeah, thing? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, no, that was a backstage IRL thing. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm fucking livid. Absolutely livid that Austin Theory is 45. I mean, I guess send he had a belt for a long time, so I, don't care. I guess. Send the motherfucker down to the pits <laughs> of hell, number four out of five, or yeah. just take him off the list. I I, I guess it's kind of like, yeah, sure, because he had a belt for a while. Um, 
for a little while. I'm looking at some of the other ones. Hiromu Takahashi, sure. Adam Page, sure. Kaito Kiyomiya, I believe that's the guy you were on about with Okada, maybe. Mm-hmm. Um, Adam Page, uh, Gran Guerrero, I'm not familiar with him. Mark Cardona, I've always known as um, Zack Ryder. He's had a decent year. Um, Jay White just does Jay White things. Ron Breaker Next at 37. Junior, had a belt. Yeah, uh, I believe he had a... Was he NXT he champion? He was NXT champion, champion for a while, I think he yeah. was, right? Yeah, yeah, he, yeah, lost, yeah. he lost it to Carmelo. Yeah, yeah, I can't remember when that was, though. <laughs> well, it's like, the thing, he lost, it's within the last year, because everyone thought he was going to come up to, yeah. uh, to Raw, and instead, Seth Rollins went to NXT mm. to fight him. That's right, that's right. So the uh, issue, solo, the issue, the issue, solo the issue with Braun is Braun has to work on his character work at it. Braun is yes. not. Braun is. Braun is not a good face. He's a very good heel, though. But he's not a good face. Yeah, I was gonna say his current heel work's been pretty fucking good, honestly. I mean, he had. People, um, he had. He had the internet. Uh, he, he, had, he, he convinced. He had a lot of people convinced that he had killed a man. <laughs> I mean, there were so many people that thought it was real, and it's like, God. Yeah. Like to the point where uh, like people had to like peel back the curtain and yeah. say, no, he didn't squish the man's head because like fucking dirt sheets were blowing up on the man. We talked about this mm. last week. Mm-hmm. Edge at 50. This is what I wanted to talk about. Edge at 50 and Sheamus at 54. I feel like Sheamus has done more. <laughs> I agree. I think Edge I is, feel like Sheamus... I, I Edge, feel is, like she, she, Edge is here off of Sheamus name alone. Him, I agree. Yeah, I agree. I, yeah. Like, and Ray, to be honest. I mean, Ray's done some stuff, you know, but it's like, I I feel like Sheamus, you've done him a bit dirty there. You've done my man a bit dirty. Oh, especially seeing fucking um, Finn Balor at 61, like... Yeah. I think uh, he Pyrus should be above all three of them. But yeah, no, Finn Balor at 61? Interesting one. I guess he's taken a lot of L's, I guess. Yeah, the win-loss um, record, I think, hurt him, but... Yeah, I think I think that's the biggest... Uh, but, but, uh, but, but then you have Damian Priest at 71, who's had the opposite luck. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that, that's that's a wild one to me. Like, kind of from this point on, I'm like, yeah, sure, you know, they, they haven't had... Um, amazing years you know what i mean uh great seeing michael oku at 97 he's a british indie wrestler i gotta see him at rev pro a few weeks back nice he's fucking excellent that's great for him to get into the top 100 honestly that's awesome for him i'm sure he'll be going up like uh in the next few years too he's had a hell of a year uh aj stella's on 99 because uh, I guess he didn't do much, did he, until recently? AJ Styles has been showing his age a little bit, but I'm really glad yeah. they're putting him back on the title picture. Even though yeah, we all I'm, know he's going to lose. I'm glad to he's Roman. doing stuff. We all know he's going to yeah, lose. Yeah, yeah. That's no secret. Mm. But I am. It is nice to see him getting some respect on here. There was, oh. one, there was one name that just <laughs> popped up. Uh, LA Knight, 130. He'll be up. He'll be up eventually. He'll probably be up. Uh, uh, going up uh, a bit further from uh, nice seeing uh, Swerve Strickland on Team 12. I'm sure he'll be up a bit more next year as well. He's fucking amazing. Dominic Mysterio at 94? I mean, he's had a decent year, you know? Yeah, I mean, technically, the wins are technically his, so yeah. even if he gets help getting <laughs> you know? Well, I mean, again, heel shit, heels do heel shit. Like, that's just how it is, but... Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, now here is one uh, name that will not be this low for very long. Ilja mm-hmm. Druganov. Oh, Elias, man, Elias is gonna be Ilya, way up the next a, year. He's at rank one fifty one. Yeah, he won't be at yeah. one fifty one next year. <laughs> that that dude, that dude's gonna be up there like next year probably. Same with um one two six Kanosuke uh, Takashita. He's gonna be up the next year. Which one? He's already cooking. Uh, one two six, I believe. Oh, okay. Is it one two six. Uh, yeah, he's the guy who just beat Kenny Omega. Uh, so <laughs> he's yeah. um he's gonna be up the next year. He's fucking cooking right now. He's so good. I'm I want to see some of the other ones. I want to skip down to the bottom here and see if there's any names down here in like the 400s that we recognize. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I know there's one that wasn't included on the list that surprised me. And that was um, that was uh, Tetsuya Naito from New Japan. Didn't they say... Just, he just won the G1 Climax, which is... Uh, <laughs> It's surprising. I guess he didn't do much beforehand, but yeah, that, that was crazy. Wasn't him. there someone that they said they were going to go to them personally and apologize for not putting him on here because they meant to? Oh, Ka- Ka- they're going. Uh, they they offered an apology to Kyrie Sane, 
who was left out of the women's 100. Oh, okay. Because uh, she was meant to go in at 16, but they just didn't put her in for some reason. Really? Yeah. Uh, Dan Howe's in at 453. Isn't he with yeah, that's AEW? Right. Yeah, that, no, that, that's perfectly fair. Dan Housen doesn't do anything. Oh, okay, um, never mind. Disregard. <laughs> I just recognize the name. Dan, 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 Dan Housen's like a, a comedy gimmick, but he's like a mole, like, he's a clear comedy gimmick. You know what I mean? Uh, Carrie, um, Carrion Cross at, I just saw him. Where the fuck did he go? Carrion Cross at 440, right where he belongs. I, I, am I surprised he's that low? I'm not, I don't know. <laughs> I'm not. I'm like thinking to myself. The, I'm the, like, thing, the thing with Karrion Cross is he loses every feud, but what he went I, in to do ends up happening. Have you have you looked at that? Someone on Twitter. Yeah. Someone on Twitter. Oh yeah, shared, yeah. The it conspiracy was like, theory. It thing, was yeah. like it was like you know every single thing in his story, story wise, that he has intended to do has happened. Every single one. Yeah. I think that's more of a coincidence than anything. <laughs> uh, it depends. It is Triple H's booking. Mm. One I expect to be higher in, in like maybe a year or two is Clark Connors. He's pretty fucking great, not gonna lie. Um, he's like with New Japan. Oh, here's one that will not be this low next year. Oh. Uh, Chad Gable is listed at 338. He'll be top that is 100. So, next year. <laughs> he's gonna be up there. He'll like, be top 100 is, next year. That is, that's crazy to me that he's that low already because he's been. He's been featured a lot of the last year. I do Pretty think it is. It is. I do think it's nice that the shield is out top. I do. Mm. I do like that. I believe there was a statistic that if Kenny Omega didn't win it a couple of years back, I believe the shield, like a shield member, would have topped it for the last seven years. Really? Because <laughs> uh, 20, 23 is Seth Rollins. Um, twenty two is Roman Reigns. Twenty one is Kenny Omega. Twenty twenty is Moxley. Uh, 19 is Rollins, 18 again is amazing. Though. But uh, yeah, <laughs> so like outside of sorry, five years it would because yeah. uh, like 2019, 20, uh, 22, and 23 have all been the shield now, <laughs> which is yeah. quite something. What what I've got here is I've got a um, list that's looking at the rankings. So we'll look at some of the biggest like climbs and stuff here. So Seth Rollins is obviously topping the list. Uh, this year, he was 17th last year. Okay, that's a which big is jump. kind of crazy. The biggest, like this, a huge one here. Um, I'll, I'll only go for the like top 15 for this top 20. Okay. Um, Gunfer was 91 last year. He's four now. Jesus. Yeah, so that's well, a huge jump. Well, having a year-long reign, I'll do that too. Yeah, so like you know, jumping up 87 places. Uh, jumping up even more than that, though, is Orange Cassidy, who was 114 last year. He's gone up 160. Jesus! That's the year that guy's had. It's been insane. Uh, other than that, you know, Cody's actually gone down four places. Uh, Josh Alexander's gone up five. Uh, Sonata, at number 11, went up 178 places. Holy shit! And then Claudio, who's just below him, beats him again with 179 places. Jesus! Because they've just had those solid years with belts. Carmelo went up 64 places. <laughs> uh, Samoa Joe, exact same place, because Samoa Joe doesn't move for anybody. Mm -hmm. You go around him. And uh, then... Masha Slamovich, 95 places. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> it's fucking crazy, dude. But yeah... It, it's cool to see, man. Bobby Lashley actually went down 14 places in the last year. Damn, really? But yeah, some crazy leaps this year. So, you know, the, the wrestling landscape's kind of shifting a little bit.